The product between a scalar m and a tensor tau. Scalar is m, say a number where ei, ej, ek are not required, 5, 7, 2.2, .2, etc. And there is a tensor tau, sum i1 to 3, j1 to 3, tau ij, ei, ej. How the multiplication will work? We write it as m tau is equal to, this summations remain the same, i equal to 1 to 3, j equal to 1 to 3. And in tau ij for each of these terms I will multiply by m and then I will write ei ej. What is the physical meaning? Let us try to understand and in terms of matrix what it means also we need to explain. Imagine tau is equal to 2 5 3 3 5 0 9 minus 2 5 and m is equal to 13.2 then m tau will be given by each of these elements will be multiplied by 13.2 for example it will be 13.2 multiplied by 2 next term is 5 multiplied by 13.2 etc i will request the students even this looks so simple you must do by your own. Multiply each of these elements by 13.2 and write down. Do not ignore even these small problems. Now what it physically means and why it is happening that has to be understood. It is not that it is an operation, matrix operation. It looks like that and we did. We have to understand why it is happening and what is the physical meaning. I take a simple example. Imagine there is a plane on which there is a stress acting at an angle. Similar problem I have done in the beginning of this NPTEL lecture. Say this amount is sigma and which can be resolved to a normal stress and a shear stress. So I can call it sigma n, this I can call as sigma s. And we know this relation sigma equal to square root of sigma n square plus sigma s square say theta is the plunge of the line of action of the sigma stress. Then we can write sigma n is equal to sigma sin theta and sigma s is equal to sigma cos theta. Since I have used a normal stress and a shear stress, this can be also represented in terms of matrix. In that matrix, there are only two elements. There is one element which is normal stress within the diagonal one of them will be filled up and only one shear stress is there. All other shear stresses are 0 and the other two normal stresses on the supposedly cube if I draw they are also 0. So in this situation suppose I decide to multiply sigma by m, m is a scalar. Say sigma is 7 Pascal and I decide to double this applied stress sigma will be doubled. So, m sigma 7 Pascal will become 14 Pascal m is equal to 2 I am talking. In that case what happens? If m sigma is the situation then I can write in that case m sigma is equal to m sigma n square plus sigma n square and here I can write m sigma n equal to m sigma sin theta and m sigma s is equal to m sigma cos theta. These are all valid. If sigma is the stress applied, these are valid. If m sigma is the stress applied, these are valid. Now what we see is that once sigma is multiplied by m, sigma n is also multiplied by m. So within the matrix if I write each of the elements which have been resolved sigma n and sigma s are all multiplied by the same m. So that is why this is being written 
Now think of nine elements within the cuboid where there are stresses acting and each of them are magnified. Then M has to go inside the matrix as I have explained right now. After doing the product between a scalar and a tensor and addition and subtraction between the two tensors of second rank, we are now going to see a few operations which students can easily pick up. They have already done in the matrix operation in the high school or in the college. Same thing will work here. The transpose of the stress tensor tau will be represented by tau to the power t. Basically, it's a symbol and it indicates the transposition. And if tau is equal to sum, shun, summation i1 to 3 j1 to 3 tau i j e i e j, which I have already explained, you can check that the tau t or the transpose of this stress will be given by sum i equal to 1 to 3 j equal to 1 to 3 tau j i e j e i. So what has happened is that the i and j mutually replace their positions. Okay? So this expansion we have already done. I will strongly request the students not to move away continuously with the lecture but stop here, expand it and check whether you are understanding the expansion properly. So from here, from these two we can say that if this is the operation then tau t transpose and one more transpose will lead to what? i and j will again interchange their positions so that goes back to tau which you already know transposition of the matrix retransposition goes back to the original matrix. Now let us take this in terms of a matrix tau as tau 1 1 1 2 1 3 2 1 2 2 2 3 3 1 3 2 3 3 its transpose will make what 1 1 2 1 3 1 will become the first row the column becomes row the second column 1 2 2 2 3 2 becomes the second row and the third column tau 1 3 tau 2 3 tau 3 3 becomes the third row tau 1 3 tau 2 3 tau 3 3 so here also it is clear that if I do tau transpose and again a transpose, it will go back to the original matrix. So now we will see if the tau transpose is equal to tau, then it will indicate a symmetric tensor. In terms of matrix, we have called it as a symmetric matrix. So we can call here as a symmetric tensor and when it will happen when tau ij equal to tau ji for i not equal to j. For example, when tau 1 2 equal to tau 2 1, tau 3 1 equal to tau 1 3 and tau 2 3 is equal to tau 3 2. Once you do this and then make a transpose, you will find that there is no difference between these two matrices. So what actually happens is that you can see in the process of transposition, they interchange their positions like tau 2 1 goes there, tau 1 2 gets down over here. And now we are saying if they are the same, if they are the same then tau and tau transpose will be the same matrix. And tau will be called an anti-symmetric matrix if tau transpose equal to minus tau. What does that mean? When tau ij, the individual elements of the matrix is equal to minus tau ji. What it means? It means that let us say tau 1 2 equal to minus tau 2 1 etc. So in that case it is called an anti-symmetric tensor. Now any tensor can be represented by a sum of symmetric and anti-symmetric tensor. That means tau can be written as sum of S which is a symmetric tensor and an anti-symmetric tensor U. Since tau is resolved into symmetric and anti-symmetric, in this case three of them are coaxial tensors. Tau, S and U all will be coaxial tensors. Why? Because the way you are defining tau ij individual elements the same axis will also work for S and U. We are just breaking the matrix into two parts. Now here S is equal to 0.5 tau plus tau transpose and U is equal to 0.5 multiplied by tau minus tau transpose. So from these two again you can see S plus U is equal to tau that is what was stated here. 
we can do S minus U and then that leads to tau transpose. Now since it is an anti-symmetric one, naturally U transpose will be equal to minus U as per definition of anti-symmetric and S transpose will be equal to S. So here in this case the U transpose and S transpose are also coaxial tensors. So we have looked in terms of transpose and what do we understand is that tau, tau transpose S U then U transpose or S transpose basically same as S are all coaxial tensors. Now we will see what is the meaning of these terms within a row, what is the common thing here. If you remember the diagram and then I will take other color chalks, this is axis 1, this is axis 2, this is axis 3. Tau 1 1, tau 1 2 and tau 1 3 has something in common. What is that? The first suffix is 1. That means the stresses are acting on plane 1 or on plane 2 3. So these three elements indicate that tau acting on plane 1. Plane 1 means a plane which is perpendicular to axis 1 and also I have said we can also call it as plane 2 3 or plane 2 3. So here tau 2 1, tau 2 2, tau 2 3, 2 is the first suffix and that is common in all of them. That means all these three stresses are acting on this particular plane. Similarly tau 3 1, tau 3 2, tau 3 3, the third row, here 3 is the first suffix in all of them. That means all these stresses are acting on surface 3, plane 3 or plane 1, 2, whatever you say. So this is the meaning when we write tau equal to this and when we do a transpose tau 1, 1, tau 2, 1, tau 3, 1, tau 1, 2, tau 2, 2, tau 3, 2, etc. Then this meaning will change. Here this column indicates, basically this column was earlier a row. This column indicates all the stresses are acting on plane 1, here this column indicates all the stresses are acting on plane 2, here this indicates all the stresses are acting along plane 3. Then what is the meaning of the rows here? What is common here 1, 1, 2, 1 and 3, 1, it indicates that the second suffix 1 is common, 1, 1 and 1. That means all these stresses are acting along direction 1, here this row indicates all the stresses are acting along direction 2 and this indicates all the stresses are acting along direction 3. In this row tau 1 1, tau 2 1 and tau 3 1 are the three stresses that are acting on three different planes. Tau 1 1 acting on plane 1, tau 2 1 acting on plane 2, tau 3 1 acting on plane 3. In this way we understand the rows and the columns which will again be useful in our subsequent works. So what I talked in terms of tau can be looked as S plus U. Here is an exercise for the student. Tau is represented with 9 elements in the matrix and I am requesting you to find out S and U in terms of tau ij individual uh, elements of the matrix. And after that take the second problem to solve. Tau is equal to I have given some numbers over here and one of them is negative and I am requesting you find out the S and the U in terms of these numbers. I hope you really stopped and did the work. Now I am going to do another obvious thing. Tau can be represented in this way which I have been telling repeatedly. Now this can also be looked in terms of two matrices. Tau related to the normal stress where I am only keeping these three elements in the matrix and rest of them I have made zero. And then another matrix tau shear stress is that now these three elements here are given 0 and rest of the elements are written. So in this way the tau can be looked in terms of the, the, the stress tensor can be looked in terms of 
sum of the stress tensor for the normal stress and that for the shear stress. Needless to mention that tau, tau n and tau s are the coaxial tensor in this case. Now I will look into the pore pressure issue and how the stress matrix will alter. Imagine a cube and the stresses are acting, I have drawn the normal stresses which are all compressive and the shear stresses are also acting. So I can draw them in that case the since there is a pore pressure PP note that this acts normal to the plane. So normal to this plane it acts outward direction normal to this plane it acts in outward direction and normal to this plane it acts in the outward direction they go in opposite direction of the compression. So in that case we need to define the effective tau. The tau effective will be given by this pore pressure PP will be subtracted only from the normal stresses that is what has been done. The shear stresses remain unaffected by this. So if I do now the trace of this tau effective if I add up this this and this element it becomes tau 1 1 plus tau 2 2 plus tau 3 3 or in other words sum i equal to 1 2 3 tau i i minus 3 p p. So once this is understood equation 2 and from here we can write tau trace of tau is equal to i equal to 1 2 3 tau i i as equation 1. From equation 1 and 2 I can write trace of tau when there is no pore pressure maybe it is a dry rock unit there is no fluid present or there is no pore space available at all. In that case the trace of tau minus the trace of T effective. Now imagine that this material was porous pore space was available fluid came now it is exerting pressure then the subtraction of the traces will be 3 pp 3 times the pore pressure. The pore pressure can also have a vectorial or directional issue. For example, I consider that pp is same along direction 1, direction 2 and direction 3 even that may not be true. If they are different for example in that case obviously I can write the tau effective will be given by tau 1 1 minus pp acting in one one direction then tau 1 2 tau 1 3 then tau 2 1 and then tau 2 2 minus pp 2 2 and tau 2 3 and then tau 3 1 and then tau 3 2 and tau 3 3 minus P P 3 3. So in this way depending on the situation understanding the physical nature of the problem in hand we can vary the stress matrix. We can present the stress matrix accordingly. We can present the stress tensor accordingly. Once I have written the effective tau I can ask you the students try to write and it is not difficult try to write this tau effective in terms of this i equal to 1 2 3 j equal to 1 2 3 and then some expression e i e j etc. It is actually very easy just from the previous expression you can write very easily.